Hello, my name is Amy Sturkey. I'm a pediatric physical therapist and I am doing a short series on the functions of behavior as I look at them for children that I work with who have autism. Last week I covered one through three and this week we're gonna do what my list of number four, five, and six. And uh, I hope these are really helpful for you. It helps me a lot as I look at children and try to figure out why are they doing what they're doing. Okay, on the last video, we talked about the functions of behaviors, and in my books, there are six really important ones. I talked about the first three last time, and now we're gonna talk about the second three. So the fourth one that in my books are really important is the attention-seeking behaviors. I call these the hand holders. Uh, uh, in my room, I have to hold their hand everywhere they go because if I don't, they'll take something and knock it down, take something and pull it, or uh, th they'll do things just to try to get me to pay attention to them. Now in my physical therapy session, I am one-on-one -on -one on them with them so they have my attention. But what I've seen them also do when I'm distracted trying to go get something is do things on purpose to try to get my attention. And sometimes that's positive and sometimes that n negatives. And often children with autism, they don't care whether they're getting positive attention or negative attention. They're going to do the behavior to try to get it, your attention. So the, what you have to do for this kind of behavior, if you think it's attention seeking, is make sure you don't give them attention for it. Now that can be really hard because sometimes they're scratching you to try to get, get your, your attention or they're doing things that are not positive to get your attention. So what you need to do is make sure you do your best to ameliorate that problem without giving them attention. So you might not say a word to them, you might not give them eye contact, but you, I also make sure that doing that kind of behavior, that if they mess it up, they clean it up. So I might not speak to them as we're cleaning up all the cups that they knock to the floor, but I make sure it's more fun to get attention by doing the right thing than attention for doing the wrong thing. And this attention seeking behavior thing is something that's a really important one to be handled well. So the next one is one that's not on many people's list, but I do think it's a really important one. And this is one where they're seeking power. Now it can be that they're trying to get away from something or get towards something, but what I often see is these are the ones that uh, they'll do something that's attention seeking, uh, negative attention seeking, and they'll do it and then get a smile on their face, like they're really happy that they have inconvenienced you. That, and what I see when I see this kind of doing a behavior for power is that these are people who feel, our clients or children who feel really unempowered, that they feel powerless and helpless and that they have to take control of the situation to get what they want. These are often what I would say, man, if they were not, didn't have special needs, these were very type A personalities that would try to be the boss. They want to be the top dog. And again, I've talked about before, it's really important for you to be the top dog. So with this kind of client who feels unempowered, sometimes I, I think of this as, uh, for example, people who are in prison, I imagine what they might do is try to do things to aggravate the guards on purpose because they're completely helpless in their situation and powerless. And so if they've aggravated the, the guards, that's like a good thing. So what I do in this situation is I make sure I give them choices. I might not give them choices of anything in the world, but a limited set of choices. If we're gonna do sit-ups, do you wanna do it on the ball or you wanna do it on the bench? Or I make sure I know what the child's likes or, and dislikes are so that, that we can do an activity that incorporates their likes or that they're doing an activity that, that, that they uh, get the reward of what they want when they're done. But by making them feel empowered that they have choices in how they do an activity or what they get when they're done with an activity, this helps this dramatically. Okay, the last one I've saved for last because I think it's so important, it's the sensory seeking behaviors. Now, uh, this can be things that are fun sensory wise for them to do or that they because of their particular sensory needs they needs. So this might be the kids that are headbangers or the rockers or the hand clappers. Um, 
And th these are things that if they were on a deserted island with nobody else around, they would do this behavior anyway. And so I, I look at that behavior and go, why are they doing that behavior? What is it that they need? So, um, for example, the kids that I see clap their hands really hard. Well, I make sure I do activities that incorporate deep pressure or input or slapping kind of input to their hands. If they're doing uh, head rocking, for example, then I'll make sure I do activities that incorporate um, movement of their head um, so that they get that same input that they're really craving. And what I find is a lot of times these kids need to be satiated in that need for whatever it is that they have sensory wise before they can move on to something else. So I make sure that I try to take care of those needs, but I think it's also important to know that these sensory needs are legitimate for them for where they are right now. If you take away their ability to slap their hands, you need to make sure that you can provide that input in a more appropriate way, another way. You can't just take it away and not replace it with a more, a more appropriate way because they need it. So this is the sixth and final of my list of the functions of behavior when I'm looking at children's behavior as I work with them in physical therapy and try to figure out how I can get them more organized to do the things that I want them to do. I hope this list of six has been helpful for you and I think it's really important as you think about how to help your children to look at why they're doing the behaviors that are inter interfering with what you need them to do and if you can address those core needs and hand them appropriately your kids are going to do so much better for you. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.